we always want to ensure that the broadest audience possible can access and enjoy our content, which is why accessibility should be part of the foundation of our design process. It's also a primary concern of search engines, so by optimizing our site for accessibility, we're also optimizing for search engines. In this lesson, we're diving into framer features and best practices that make for a diverse audience of happy visitors, all while boosting our visibility and ranking with search engines. While Framer does generate well-optimized code, a ton of impact comes from us assigning as much meaning as possible to elements on the page, which in turn benefits both visitors and search engines. Let's start by revisiting textiles. In an earlier lesson, we looked at how creating a textile starts with assigning a semantic tag, like paragraph, heading one, heading two, etc. It's always best to use a clear heading structure starting with an H1 for the most primary title on the page, and then progressively moving down to H2, H3, and so on and so forth. Breaking text down into a clean hierarchy is great for usability and improves the experience for users using screen readers, allowing easier navigation and access to information. Back in our project file here, even though we set a semantic tag for the textile itself, we can override it for specific instances in the accessibility section on the properties panel. And this is where we'd go to set a tag for a text layer that doesn't have a text style applied. We can and should add semantic tags for frames as well. For example, if I double click my way into this layout template, select the footer frame and click the plus sign or title of the accessibility section, I can choose tag then I can specify that this is, in fact, a footer. Most of the items on this list are pretty self-explanatory, but if you're not familiar with OL, that stands for ordered list, like a numbered list of items, and UL is an unordered list, like bullet points. And we can get even more detailed with our descriptions of images. If we select a frame with an image, then open the fill properties, here we see a field called alt text where we can describe the content of this image. These alt tags, also known as alt descriptions or alt attributes, are also critical for screen readers that would otherwise be unable to describe an image on the screen. Plus, it can ensure compliance with legal standards for accessibility. And of course, help search engines understand the content of images on the page. But again, don't go too nuts with keywords because search engines are smarter than that. Don't get penalized for being a spammy little weirdo. Just write a simple sentence describing the image with punctuation and all. We also have another accessibility tool altogether for graphic elements that aren't images, like icons, for example. It's called an ARIA label, which stands for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. ARIA labels are kind of like a hybrid between frame tags and alt text in that we can apply them to an element on the canvas, like an icon, and describe what it is so that a screen reader can read it to visitors using assistive hardware or software. One of these social media buttons is a great example because there's really nothing here for a screen reader to read. So with this frame selected, which is the actual clickable frame with the link applied to it, we can see in the accessibility section of the properties panel that there's already a tag applied called A, which is HTML for link. And we can click accessibility to add an ARIA label and get more descriptive with something like visit us on Instagram which clearly describes what will happen if a visitor who can't see this button selects it. If a button or link does have text, it's always best for that text to be descriptive. Again, like visit us on Instagram rather than just go or visit. And whether visitors are using assistive tools or not, a whole lot of folks use the tab key to jump between links on the page, buttons, and inputs, which by default follow their arrangement in the layers panel and typically end up reading kind of like a book from top to bottom, left to right. But there will be times where designing the most efficient experience possible means us taking thoughtful control of the tab index. The Google homepage is a great example, because if you read this like a book, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six interactive elements that come before the search bar. And that search bar is where visitors are gonna to wanna to go first the vast majority of the time. But this page was actually designed with that in mind. And the search bar has been given the number one spot in the tab index. Press tab once and you're immediately there. 
This is super easy to accomplish in Framer. Let's say I want this primary CTA to be the first thing focused when a visitor presses tab. I'll select the button, head to the accessibility section of the properties panel and click to add the tab index property. With this set to one, we're good to go. Now in the browser, the first press of the tab key will focus our primary CTA. Okay, one last property. This one is specific to search engines. By default, if a page is indexed by Google, everything on the page will be scanned, so to speak. But if we have an element like an advertisement that doesn't really have any value from a search perspective, we can tell Google to exclude it by adding the Google bot property set to skip. Now let's go up a level and look at some site settings and page settings that can impact accessibility and SEO. This icon on the toolbar will bring us into our site settings. And on the left, you can see that we're currently looking at the general tab. There are a bunch of useful settings in here, but for now, we're just gonna touch on the ones relevant to this lesson. I'm gonna skip title for a moment and talk about site language. Accurately declaring a language helps search engines out, but more importantly, it helps assistive technologies like screen readers or translation services. Framer also allows us to localize our sites to show different content for multiple languages or regions, but we're gonna get into that in a dedicated lesson. But since my site is currently just English, I'll set this accordingly. Okay, next setting. Modern operating systems allow users to set a preference for reducing motion where possible. Here in our site settings, we have a checkbox that says disable movement animations and custom cursors if the user prefers reduced motion, which we can decide to enable or not. Essentially, enabling this setting on our end allows our site to better respect visitors' preferences on their end. Back up at the top, I skipped over these fields for site title and site description because they're really properties that we want to be setting at the page level. But whatever we set here will get inherited by pages where we haven't specified otherwise. But again, we do want to specify these things at the page level. So let's select a specific page on the left and start with the page title. You might be thinking, I thought this page already had a name. Didn't we just click on the name of it? Didn't I name my pages on the pages panel? But earlier in the course, we talked about how the name of the page is used to determine its URL. The title of the page is a bit different. This title is what users see in search engine results, the label that appears on browser tabs, in bookmarks, and could show up when someone shares a page on social media. Page descriptions show up in search results as well, and both help search engines and human beings understand what the page is about. So naturally, we wanna put some thought into these. I have a few tips for you. Like I mentioned, we want these to be unique for each page. Try to include keywords that represent the content in a natural way. Don't force it, because again, search engines see right through that. Try to keep titles under 60 characters so they don't get cut off in search results and keep descriptions under around 160 characters. What's nice is that Framer gives us a little preview of how the title and description might look together in search results. Basically, just try to keep things short but descriptive. As far as the URL of each page is concerned, like I mentioned, the name of the page becomes an integral part of its URL. Unlike the Pages panel, this URL field shows the whole path to a page, including folders or nested page hierarchies, so everything that comes after the domain name. Changes you make to names on the Pages panel will be reflected here, and changes you make here will be reflected on the Pages panel. Simple, well-structured URLs make it easier for search engines to crawl and index your content. And clean, descriptive URLs are easier for potential visitors to understand and trust. So a few tips. We want URLs to be short and descriptive like page titles. In fact, it's good to match the page title if possible. URLs are also case sensitive and it's recommended to stick to just lowercase letters, but you'll notice Framer actually handles that for us if you try to type a capital letter. And similarly, we wanna use hyphens to separate words because URLs technically can't have actual spaces, but Framer handles this for us too by replacing spaces with hyphens. But the key takeaway is to separate words rather than mashing them all together. Last and not least for settings, we have the option to show or not show entire pages in search engines. So if you don't want a page to be so discoverable, just uncheck the box and you're set. 
And there you have it. Now you know how Framer's built-in tools assist us in enhancing our website's accessibility and search engine performance, making it a pretty simple process to make our sites more inclusive and discoverable. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.